Hey guys, I'm finally back with the video on the new components and properties and variants and all of those updates that we actually had in the config 2022. Uh, I know that I'm probably very late and you guys have probably watched tons of videos by now, but I was shifting. There was a lot of stuff going on in my home, but we have a new background. We have a new microphone and hopefully this is going to obviously improve some of the videos that I'm actually creating. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So obviously as many of you know like i was a strong proponent of the base structure system and all of that but that's no longer going to be used with the new updates that figma has and maybe to some extent it is not really that much needed it is needed i can see a lot of value in it but uh, since we can't use it we don't have to use it so now <clears throat> let's go ahead and actually start creating some components in order to experiment with how you actually go about and use the new components and properties and all of the panels that we have. So in order to do so, let's just go ahead and actually quickly create a, uh, I could create a button component, but I'm gonna create something more complicated, which can be an input component. I feel like an input component with a lot of different types and a lot of different customizations can actually be a great example to see here. So let's just go ahead and actually do that. So. I am going to first of all create an input component that actually has a frame around it. So obviously let's give it a frame. Um, let make, let's make the border radius four pixels. Let's give it a particular height. Uh, we're going to use a particular size for the inputs, which is going to be 40 and then 44 or maybe 36, 40 and then 48 or something. So small, medium, large. Let's just create the medium variant first. So here we have the input field. I'm going to say this is going to be our placeholder and let's just place an icon on the left as well. I'm just gonna use uh, some of the icons that I have. Let's just uh, use an icon like, uh, I don't know, the search icon as an example. Let's just use the search icon and give it a particular size that probably suits it much better. Maybe 16 would be a good size on, at this particular uh, size I think that's fine let's just go ahead and actually rename this uh, frame to content and let's create an auto layout here I'm gonna make it fixed height because I want it to always have a fixed height of 40 pixels so now that that's done let's just go ahead and actually tweak some of the uh, colors here I am gonna go ahead I don't actually have colors here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep the colors away for now we're not gonna use the Actually, let's just go ahead and actually import uh, some libraries where we can just find some colors if this works. So I'm going to use the UI kit that we have. And now I hopefully have the colors that I need. So here we have the colors. I'm going to use the, <clears throat> sorry, I actually am going to use a color like this 600 for and then the 600 here as well since it's the placeholder text obviously we don't want to keep it very large i want to keep it keep the font size at normal which is going to be 14 and let's go ahead and actually align it to the center and also align the whole field to the center so here we have our basic input obviously we need to give a stroke to it so i'm going to give a stroke to it which can be like something like this and i think we have our component created I'm also going to add another icon on the further right. So let's just go ahead and actually, uh, this is an auto layout already. Let's just actually position it here and copy this particular icon. Um, so this is going to be our left icon. I'm just going to rename it like that and then paste this icon. And let's just go ahead and actually expand this. So I'm going to fill the container here and I'm going to say there on the right, we can also have another icon, which can be an info icon just in case a person wants to go ahead and actually have a look at uh, some of the additional details here as well. So here we have an info icon on the right, then we have a search icon on the left, and these can be configurable. So now we have our component created. I feel like that's gonna be sufficient for now. So I'm gonna rename this component input field or something. Now there are different ways to create new variants. You can just create a new variant by pressing the plus button here. It's gonna duplicate this variant. You can go ahead actually and go to the main menu and then uh, the main component and say add variant. 
you can go here, you can, sorry, not here. You can go here and add a new variant property that's gonna convert it to a variant. And then you can obviously duplicate it and all of that stuff. But now that I've, I've done that, I'm just gonna say that I wanna have different types of inputs. So one is gonna be contained, which is the one that you actually see in front of you. So I'm gonna say this one is gonna be contained and I think I renamed this. So let's just go ahead and actually say type. And then we're gonna have another similar one, which is gonna be a bordered, which is actually just gonna have a border at the bottom. I'm sure you've seen it, like we have a lot of those bordered types of inputs in Material UI. So now that we have this done, this looks fine. But if now someone actually wants to go ahead and hide these icons, how does that happen? That happens with properties. So we have different types of properties. If I go here to the actual component, you can see that there are different types of properties. You can have a Boolean property that can be an on and off to toggle the layer visibility. You can have an instance swap property that can allow you to swap instances like icons or maybe some other components. And then you can have a text property. So I'm gonna create another property at the top and I can also go ahead and select that particular layer and I can say, I want a text property here and I'm gonna say the text property should be placeholder. The name of the text property should be placeholder. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna to go to the layer here. We're gonna say that this particular property is creating a Boolean property and it, it would be for the right icon. And I'm gonna also rename this to the right icon. Even if you don't rename it, now that does not matter because you can directly link the properties without necessarily preserving the names. So obviously that's that's much more error prone, like uh, error free. I'm gonna create another property here and I'm gonna say left icon. So now if I just go ahead and actually show what this looks like, as you can see, we have a contained type, we have a placeholder and I can change that text directly from here. I no longer have to go ahead and command click here. I can control everything at the top. I can say the right icon, whether that should be visible or not, or the left icon should be visible or not. And all of these things, previously I think, especially for the right icon, the left icon, I probably would have created, let's say two or three different variants along with the base one, which had these different combinations applied to it, right? But now we don't have to do that. It's really easy to just go ahead and actually have something like that. There's also one other magical thing that I would like to talk about is the instance swap that we have now. If I wanna go ahead and actually create an instance swap property, I can say this is gonna be our left icon. Uh, let's just name it left icon. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and actually tweak the first one. So this is left icon visibility. And this other one is left icon, what the left icon should be. So if I go here as an example, I'm, I can easily go ahead and actually just change the icon directly from the top. I don't have to click it. I don't have to do anything. I can do that directly. One thing, however, if the left icon is invisible, as you can see, it's invisible the left icon instance swapping property also disappears. So they're linked together now because I have the same thing, the same property being applied here and here. So it's actually figuring out, hey, if you don't even have the left icon visible, then it's probably very likely that you don't wanna switch the instances of it. So it's automatically gonna hide that from the component and make it much easier for me to digest the properties on the right. So that's really powerful, which we have with these new Figma properties and component enhancements. Now let's go ahead and actually do something else. Let's go ahead and duplicate this particular one, this particular variant, and say we wanna create the underlined variant. In the underlined variant, instead of the border top, obviously, as you guys know, we have a border bottom property here as well. We can just make it border bottom. I'm gonna remove the border radius here. I'm gonna remove the fill because these usually don't have a fill. And I'm also gonna go ahead and remove the padding from the left and the right since they usually don't have a padding on the left and the right. And there you go. That's how you go about and actually create something like this. I'm gonna say the placeholder should be enter a state or search for a state or whatever search for a state. And as you can see, we have the underlined, we can make it contain. The placeholder is being preserved. And what's really magical about this now if even if I go ahead and actually, I think, change this particular layer name, I'm gonna say this is gonna be Baba, and I'm gonna actually bury it within, let's say, tons of auto layouts. As you can see, we have tons of auto layouts here. But since that particular content property is now linked to the text property that exists at the larger component, it's not gonna, it, there's not gonna be a problem with it anymore. I can say this is gonna be our search, 
And now if I switch this, it should hopefully maintain that particular text. Even though the text layers are, the text layer names are different, they're actually in a completely different structure as well. That's still being preserved. So now that's extremely important and it's very useful. So I think that's what I wanted to cover for this particular video. I think I've covered most of the properties that I wanted to highlight here. Obviously we can go into, we can make a larger component here. We can increase the size, we can reduce the size, but I'm pretty sure you guys can do that. But I'll just go ahead and actually show you how to do it one, one time because maybe you're thinking that you can do the size adjustment as well with the component properties, but you can't. You would have to create a new variant for the smaller sizes because you're actually tweaking the font sizes, you're tweaking the spacing in the auto layout, you're tweaking the icon sizing. So that's gonna need or require some adjustments. So if I was to create, well, first of all, I actually have to go here. I have to say, I wanna add a new variant type uh, or a variant property. That's gonna be the size. By default, the size in these cases is gonna be medium. And I can go ahead and I can say, I wanna create a small size here. And for the small size, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna make this 36 pixels in height. And I can just reduce the padding on the left on this one. Say that the left and the right padding should probably be eight or maybe 12, 12 is fine. I'm not sure why I gave 15 here, it should be 16 because we usually follow, follow the four pixel grid. And I can reduce the icon sizes here to 14, reduce the spacing here to maybe six and reduce this particular uh, text size to 12, maybe something like that, I think would be fine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually just going to, uh, because of the ease of use, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy all of these things. I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste them. So now that I have them pasted, I'm just going to remove them. And as you can see, we have the smaller variant. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say state. So again, even if I'm changing it directly by selecting the text, that particular property or that particular text is also applied at the larger level. So what I think these new updates have actually helped, helped us to do is reduce a lot of number of variants, uh, uh, reduce really unused variants that we used to create just for certain use cases. And it's also allowed us to configure the whole component directly at the top level without necessarily going into a lot of details. Similarly, if I now go ahead and make it contained, that's gonna work. I can change the size, that's gonna work as well. And it's just really awesome. So those are some of the updates that I wanted to talk about. Obviously, you are no longer required to create a base structure. You're no longer required to make sure that the text layer names are correct if you're applying a property to it. If you're not applying a property to it, then obviously those text layer names should be the same. If you update them, then obviously that, uh, and if there's not a property that's actually being linked, a component property being linked to those text layers, then there's gonna be issue with it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. Let me know what you think of this video, of the microphone, of the background, anything else you would like to see. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.